This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hi, y'all, and welcome to Horsin' Around. Saddle up and get ready to have a darn tootin', gallopin' good time as we trot out the show that's your ultimate horse sorts, of course. Find out how to use good old horse sense when it comes to breeding, feeding, training, and explaining. From practical tips on caring for your horse's health to advice on how to buy horse supplies, including bridles, halters, saddles, and more. So get ready to start horsing around with your host, horse expert and award-winning rider, Audrey Pavia. Howdy, Audrey. Welcome to Horsing Around on PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're going to talk about Pilates for equestrians. Early in the 20th century, a physical fitness instructor named Joseph Pilates developed a physical fitness system of exercising that focuses on the core postural muscles that help keep the body balanced. Although Joseph Pilates didn't develop this method specifically for equestrians, Pilates has proven valuable in helping riders become better at what they do. With the use of specific Pilates exercises, you can target not only muscles that help you ride, but learn to create and train your natural aids to function independently. This then creates harmony and clear, precise communication with your horse. Today, we're going to find out all about Pilates for equestrians with Sue Kellogg-Graff, a certified equestrians Pilates instructor, who is also a riding instructor and trainer for Kellogg Equestrian Academy in Cota de Casa, California. We talked to Sue right after these messages. Why the long face? I reckon horsing around will be back in the saddle right after we round up a few words from our sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're chomping at the bit to hear more horsing around. Well, we're back on the trail. So park yourself over yonder and set a spell. You ain't heard nothing yet. Welcome back to Horsing Around. I'm your host, Audrey Pavia, and we are here with certified equestrians Pilates instructor, Sue Kellogg-Graff, to talk about Pilates for equestrians. Sue, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. First, let's help people understand what exactly Pilates are. How did it develop and what does it do for your body? Well, equestrian Pilates is really interesting. It was developed by a gal named Elizabeth Hansen out east, who was a Pilates instructor by trade and a horsewoman by nature. Um, In her work, she constantly saw the connection between these Pilates exercises that you talked about as far as core muscles and creating the ability to to be strong and balanced in your core and yet still have this uh, independent use of your natural aids. By playing with all the different Pilates exercises, she put together a book and a certification program that truly spoke to the rider. The amazing thing is that this collection of exercises and the spirit behind them transcends all the different riding disciplines. So she successfully helped polo players and dressage riders and trail riders and gated riders, just to name a few. Uh, The basics are the same. You want to be balanced on your horse, and the mechanics can be different. What parts of your body need to be strong and stable so you can swing a big old mallet and not throw yourself off balance? One of the things that Elizabeth said during our certification was um, that Joseph Pilates did not have his exercises set in stone. She said that we should be playful in our approach, that by being creative... We may come up with variations on an exercise that work better for one client over another, or we may come up with whole new exercises. And I love that. By being both an equestrian Pilates instructor and a riding instructor, I love to take the spirit of the equestrian Pilates onto the horse. I've had some really successful lessons on the horse when I unite the equestrian Pilates, the playfulness, and the riding instruction. So tell us how Pilates work to help us ride better. What exactly does it do for your body that corresponds to the way we need to ride. From what I have experienced, the equestrian Pilates teaches you about your body off your horse. I believe the first step to fixing a problem is to be aware. And once we have the awareness, then we can find the path to correcting the problems. 
So the exercises in equestrian Pilates not only strengthen the core, but teach you to have independent body parts. And that's the necessary tool if we're going to ride correctly and well. By learning how to engage the core and really find those muscles that so many of us don't use, we can stabilize the body from there and free up our arms and our shoulders and our legs to communicate with our horse. Tell me why the core is so important to balance, which, you know, is really crucial when you're riding. What I find is that we have so many great muscles to use in in our core and in our back and not to access them. So what happens is we end up bracing or we end up compensating in other parts of our body. If I have a client that has weak obliques, then she may uh, brace against one side of the stirrup or the other side of the stirrup and end up leaning, not meaning to. Um, Or I've got, I had a client that had a weak leg um, from an old accident, an old injury, and so she was compensating by really using her other leg, but what that did was it didn't let her communicate with her horse because that leg was always bracing. So by really utilizing our trunk and our core, we balance our upper body with those muscles, and that allows the freedom and the movement in the rest of our body to communicate with our horse. Why are Pilates better than just doing regular floor exercises like crunches and leg lifts? For me, the spirit of equestrian Pilates um, goes well beyond the regular floor exercises. And when I teach, I've got two goals. I want to help my client get stronger, but I also want to increase the awareness around their body. And by bringing awareness into the equation, you can help a client in so many different aspects of their life. I have one client come to me and say, you know, we've been doing all these exercises, and because of the work we've been doing and becoming aware of how my body's aligned, I realized I was sitting all crooked in my car when I drove, and... I'd get to where I was going, and I'd have this horrible backache. She said, so all of a sudden I went, oh, I've got one hip forward and one hip back, and my head's tilted to one side, and my arm's over here. And she said, as soon as she kind of aligned herself and straightened herself out, she could get to where she was going and not have a backache anymore. Right. And how does it help the horse? From the horse's perspective, weight pushes them around. So if I stand on the right side of horse and I push against the side, he's going to go left and vice versa. So if we're leaning, say we're trying to turn left and we're pulling with our left rein and we're leaning to the left as well, now the horse is getting two signals. Okay, my mouth is being pulled on to go left, but the body weight is pushing me right. And so that's confusing for them and it can do a couple of things. It can make a horse not turn very well or it can also uh, confuse a horse and you wind up with head and shoulders going one way and swinging the haunches out and losing that nice connection from hind end to front end that we all look for. Can it uh, affect the horse's back? Can it cause pain anywhere? It certainly can. And if you think about sitting with more weight in, in one side of your seat than the other, now we're pressing on that muscle. There's, there's two nice big muscles that run on either side of their spine. And we're pressing on one muscle more than the other constantly. Now that side is carrying that load. We're not evening it out. Um, the other thing that can start to happen is, is our tack starts to show that wear and tear. And so even once we correct ourselves, we need to really look at our saddle and make sure that we haven't created a saddle that now, you know, sits lower on one side than the other and causes some pressure points on the horse. Hmm. And if that's the case, does that mean you need to get a new saddle? Well, or, or um, I know there are a lot of saddle fitting experts out there. Um, a lot of times you can get them restuffed. A lot of times you can get a really good pad that goes underneath it that will help. Um, there's some good dense foam pads out there that I think work really well to help alleviate some of those problems. And it would be it'd be a, a long time of sort of, you know, being crooked and sitting that way to create that much difference in your saddle, but it certainly happens. I know that breathing is an important part of Pilates. How does that tie into all this? Breathing is a huge part of Pilates, and I think it's one of the pieces that is really hard for people to kind of grasp. In our riding, you know, we, we've probably all seen the picture where the gal's holding her breath and the horse is kind of afraid, like what boogeyman is around the next corner because my rider who's supposed to be uh, the boss <laughs> is holding their breath. So the breathing, the breathing in Pilates helps us engage our core and allows us to strengthen those muscles as well as access those muscles and it also allows us to get our limbs to be independent so you get more fluid motion in your shoulder joints and your hip joints and your ankles Um, that obviously corresponds over to the horse we want to breathe with them one of the things that we don't want to do is hold our breath either when we're when we're exercising and doing Pilates or when we're riding then you lose that fluid motion that 
that our body takes on and that we need to follow our horse when we ride. And for trail riders who deal with spooky stuff, especially urban trail riders, um, it sounds like the breathing is particularly important. It really is. You can do a lot with your breathing to calm a horse. And the longer and slower breaths you take and the more you come in with your abdominals and engage your abdominals, the couple things happen. One, you're going to calm your horse down, which is always going to help you. You know, those trash cans and those trash trucks and water trucks and all that stuff that, that the urban riders find and come up against, that certainly helps their horse out. But it also keeps them loose and relaxed. So if they need to react, they're right there. Um, right. A tense rider is always going to be a rider that's a little bit behind the motion and can't move with their horse and sort of stick in the saddle the way they need to. Now, I know I have a problem where um, if I get nervous uh, for whatever reason, whether the horse feels like it's going to spook or is spooking or something's happening and I'm up there, I feel like I want to go into the fetal position, right? Or actually, I don't even feel it coming. You just kind of do it. And you kind of curve inward and your shoulders round. And what does that do to you? <laughs> well, first off, we've all felt that. <laughs> um, and secondly, it throws your balance off. So, you know, we all want to sort of go into that fetal position and, and round our bodies, but now we don't have any strength to help our horses out. And we also lose our balance. Our shoulders are usually out in front of our hips and, you know, our knees are probably bending too much and our feet get behind us. If we were on the ground, we'd, you know, standing and we did that, we'd probably fall down. And it's the same thing with the horse. So, one of the things that breathing can help with that is, okay, I'm going to breathe in and I'm going to really expand my chest and I'm really going to be tall in the saddle and I'm going to be brave for my horse. I need to, I'm the boss and I'm the leader and I need to be brave for, for him so that he can take care of me. It also keeps our shoulders over our hips and our alignment is so important, especially in situations like that where we get a little nervous. They're such a sensitive animal, and, and we need to be able to feel all of that in our bodies because they feel it all. So the more aware mm -hmm. we can be of what we're doing, the better communication we have with them. So at a moment like that when you're afraid and, you know, you just kind of go into autopilot, it seems to me because Pilates, I know there's a mind over matter factor involved. Does it become second nature if you're doing Pilates that you automatically, your, your body just kind of kicks in to the right position so you don't revert to the fetal position and end up on the ground? Yeah, I think that's really true down the road. Um, I think the first thing that happens is it because it makes you so aware of your body, you go, oh, I need to sit up and I need to breathe and I need to pull in those abs and, and help support the rest of my body so that the rest of my body can react to my horse. My legs and my arms and my feet can all be there um, and, and stick with my horse and stay with my horse and tell them what I want them to do. I think the other piece of it is it does become second nature. We deal a lot with muscle memory and, you know, our bodies have generally some bad habits. We all do. It, they compensate. Our body compensates for weak areas. One of the things that Pilates does is it helps retrain those muscles so that if I normally brace with my right leg and my horse wants to spin left, I'm going to be in trouble. But if I remember, ooh, I need to engage my core, I need to relax my hips a little bit, find my inner thighs so I'm sticking to the saddle and I'm sticking to my horse, now all of a sudden that spin is rideable and correctable. And that's a huge piece of, you know, our horses don't get better if we don't train them and if we can't ride through those situations. They need us to be able to, to really train them through some of that stuff, and then they'll get desensitized, and then it won't be there as much. And, and we'll be less afraid, too, and that makes a mm -hmm. big difference. So you're, what you're saying is that if you do this, if you do Pilates enough, when those moments happen, it'll, it'll just be right there. You don't even have to think about it. Exactly. And isn't that the goal for all of us? <laughs> right. <laughs> How about people who have an injury? Like I have, you know, meniscus problems in my knees. Can you do equestrian Pilates if you have issues like that? Absolutely. What I, what I tell my clients is, you know, I, I'd like them to divulge that information to me up front so I know what I can do and what I can't do. For someone with knee issues, I'm not going to have you do great big squats. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to have you put pressure on those knees. But there's so many other ways to access the, the abs and the obliques and, you know, all the different muscles that we need to find. And the other thing it'll do for you is it'll help you when you ride. So instead of gripping with your knees because you're out on trail and you got to cross that giant creek, you can go, oh, engage my abs, breathe, find my inner thighs, let my knees be so that you're not putting undue strain on your knees. 
neck issues, all that stuff we can work around, which is one of the great things. There's so many different exercises. It's one of the great things about equestrian Pilates. And I would think that it would actually help people that have back issues, for example, because if it strengthens your core, then you're going to put less strain on your back when you're riding. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest problems that people have is that our abs are weak, and so our low back takes over for those abdominals, and we strain our low back. And so by strengthening everything and letting it all work together, now your abs are supporting, your low back can relax, and then you don't have that strain. So I find a lot of success with people who have back issues, people who have shoulder issues, knees are a really big one. I have a gal that has a thigh injury, and so her, her one leg just does not, it will never be as strong as her right leg, but we, you know, we work around it. There, there's always a workaround, I, and I think that's the, the great thing about Pilates and about riding is you just learn how to deal with it and use other muscles to compensate, and um, when you do that in a balanced way, you're great. Okay, well, Sue, we're going to go to a break. We'll be right back to talk about how Pilates can help riders with specific issues. A little bit of, we've been talking about that a little bit. We're going to go into a little bit more and talk about the different disciplines. So we'll be right back after these messages. Why the long face? I reckon horsing around will be back in the saddle right after we round up a few words from our sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're chomping at the bit to hear more horsing around. Well, we're back on the trail. So park yourself over yonder and set a spell. You ain't heard nothing yet. We're back to Horsing Around on PetLifeRadio.com. I'm your host, Audrey Pavia, and we're talking to Pilates instructor Sue Kellogg-Graff. Sue, tell me how... Give me some examples of riders that have certain problems that uh, have been corrected by Pilates, you know, without giving names, obviously, but maybe some clients that you have that you can give us some examples of. I probably need to tell you about me first, because I think Uh, that's always something that that helps people understand I've got issues too. And I've got scoliosis, so I've got two great big bends in my spine, plus a bunch of vertebrae that are twisted. So I am your very much atypical, asymmetrical rider. One of the things that I struggle with is my hips are not aligned, and so I want to brace in my right stirrup. What that translates into in my her jumper world is I struggle with lead changes, and I struggle with horses landing on the correct lead. So by fixing that, I may not look straight in my back to anyone else, but I know because of the work I've done in my equestrian employees, and I'm aware of the weight in my seat bones and the weight in my stirrups and where my thighs are hitting my saddle... I know if I'm balanced or not, and I know if I'm bracing or not. And when I don't brace and I can be balanced and I can align my body the way it needs to be, then I don't have those issues. My horses can canter freely and can do flying leg changes and ask for the correct lead over the fence and all that good stuff. So for me, that has been a huge help. I have a client that has a little thoroughbred mare who is darling but has started being an issue being ridden in uh, with a lot of traffic in an arena. So one of the things this mare likes to do is spin left, and by helping this gal strengthen her core, really find her obliques, and really teach her how to engage the muscles from her armpit to her hip, she can not only sit that spin better, but now her, her right arm is free to hold her mare straight, and her left leg is free to help support that. And so... It's not as scary to watch it happen, which is great. She doesn't Mm -hmm. get scared, which is super. 
but she's also training that mare in the moment. Whereas before, just kind of hanging on and dealing with it, it doesn't get any better. But now that we've really gotten this gal to find her muscles and use her muscles, so she's not bracing, but she's being strong, her mare's starting to get rid of this behavior that, that had gotten started through the winter months and the rainy months. Right. I know for myself, I have spondylolisthesis, and so I've got uh, back issues, and equestrian Pilates would probably help me, I'm guessing. I think it would be great for you because one of the things it would do is, it, like I said, it would take that core, it would strengthen it, you'd have much more body awareness. So, you know, you may be doing something as simple as, oh, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hunch my shoulders up. And I'm guessing, but it could be happening. I'm hunching my shoulders up. Well, you've up. seen me ride, so you don't have store. to guess. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and so that puts strain in your in your upper back, you know, uh-huh. and that just translates all the way down through those muscles. So, yeah, it'd be great for you. You need to come do a session with me. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to after this. Excellent. <laughs> so tell me for dressage riders out there, I, I have a friend who does um, pre-St. George level dressage, and she's a Pilates fanatic. How is this so helpful for dressage riders in particular? I think for dressage riders, it's great because they are so connected through their seat with their horse. One of the things, just in observing dressage riders, one of the things that I notice is there are a large number of dressage riders out there that are not connected through their abdominals and their core. And so they get this wiggle in their low back trying to follow their horse with their pelvis that it disrupts everything above that. So it disrupts the rib cage and the shoulders and the arm and the connection that the arm has to have with the bridle and the horse's mouth. If that's not happening, the other thing that happens that I see a lot is that they are so tight in their low back, they're trying to keep it still so that it doesn't jiggle all the building blocks up above and hurt that alignment, that they can't stay connected with their seat. They can't keep their seat in their saddle. And one of the reasons why is because they're tensing all of their muscles. And so... Equestrian Pilates or even regular Pilates from a dressage standpoint is great because it makes you isolate your core and then it makes you work all your your limbs, um, you know, all our natural aids for our horse. And so you learn how to soften the muscles around your hips so that your pelvis can follow the seat and follow the horse's back, yet still maintaining your beautiful upright posture but staying loose in your shoulders because you need that connection with your horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. So from a dressage standpoint, I think it's fabulous. I think it's mostly prevalent in the dressage world. I see more dressage riders doing equestrian Pilates and Pilates than in any other discipline right now. I think the other disciplines are catching up, but I think the dressage riders are far and above much more accepting of sort of cross-training, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. than the other disciplines. So hopefully the rest of us will get there. Right. And, you know, as you're talking, I'm, I'm remembering that people I've talked to who are just learning to ride, uh, like my husband, Randy, for example, one thing they point out is, you know, how am I supposed to remember to do this with my hands and do that with my legs and do this with my seed? And there's so many different elements. It's almost like playing the drums. You know, every part of your body is doing something different. It sounds like Pilates training helps you with that. It really does, and it really breaks down the body and makes you look at each part of your body and each set of muscles independently of everything else. And that's really a a good trainer, riding instructor. um, We'll do that with the beginners as well. It's harder because it's sort of overwhelming and big picture, but as they get more comfortable on the horse and kind of find their rhythm, that's one of the things that a good riding instructor will do, and that's a great thing that Pilates teaches us. Mm -hmm. Um, is to isolate. So, you know, we want to lift the leg, but we don't want to interrupt the shoulder being quiet when we're in a certain position. And we do that Mm -hmm. by engaging the core and letting those muscles stabilize the pelvis area and stabilize, um, you know, the shoulder girdle. It makes a huge difference. How would it help Western riders? I did a clinic a couple, probably six, eight months ago, and, and there were a lot of Western riders in it. And Western riders are interesting. They're so beautiful and quiet and still on a horse. The gal in particular I'm thinking of had a fair amount of back pain. And it, again, was from not being able to soften the muscles around her hips and find her core and and alleviate the strain she was having in her low back from trying to stay connected with the seat 
and, you know, kind of have her legs out in front of her um, and still balance and, and keep this beautiful posture with her upper body. So she found it made a huge difference because she was able, just like the dressage rider, able to follow that motion and really stay with the horse, especially when you're, you know, when you're increasing speed and, and sliding or you're, um, you know, barrel racing is huge where you need to kind of get into the motion. But if you lean, <laughs> you're going to throw your horse to the outside instead of having them cut in and, and be tight around the barrel. So, mm-hmm. um and even the Western Pleasure Riders, it alleviates so much stress on our joints if we just be balanced on our horses. Tell me how equestrian Pilates are taught. Do you do it on the horse? Do you do it on a mat? I teach all of my equestrian Pilates classes on a mat. There is some training out there for the chair and apparatus as well, and I know that's that's starting to get bigger. What I find is that I can keep the classes challenging enough on the mat and then translate some of that onto the horse when I give riding lessons as well. So periodically I'll do a, a lunge line lesson with somebody and incorporate some of those equestrian Pilates situations and, and exercises into that lesson. But we always do it on the mat first because they have to learn about the muscles and we need to take out the element of the horse and the movement of the horse. So, mm-hmm. yeah, typically it's done on the mat and people really, you know, people enjoy it. So how, how often does a rider need to do it? Like, would they go to a class once a week and then do exercises at home, or how does that work? I think that's a great way to do it. I have a, a gal who, I go to her house once a week, and we do our thing, and she, every week I give her sort of a handful of exercises, and she's great about doing a little bit every day. It's not a half hour, it's not 45 minutes maybe 15 or 20 minutes every day, and it keeps her limber, which is huge, and it keeps her starting to retrain those muscles and get that muscle memory going um, the way that we want it to. So I think that, um, well, I think, you know, DVDs are great, and I think doing it on your own at home is great. Um, I also think every now and then, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, something. You need an instructor there to be able to look at you and look at your alignment and say, okay, when you're coming up into bridge pose, you're dropping your right hip just a hair and you need to find that oblique on that side and you need to, you know, squeeze it just a little more and keep those hips balanced. Little tiny things like that, that, you know, we think in our own bodies that we're pretty balanced and we're pretty aligned. um, But then you need that, that extra set of eyes to kind of look at you and, and tweak you a little bit and help you out. So, that's where I think that's really valuable to have that, you know, one-on-one or, or, or two-on-one um, time so that when you go home and you do them, you can go, I remember, I need to, you know, check this out. I need to check out the alignment of my hips or I need to check out that my knees aren't turning out or, you know, I need to really watch my shoulder because it tends to do this or that. Do you need to do it in front of a mirror when you're at home by yourself? I think doing it in front of the mirror would be great. I don't know very many people that want to exercise in front of the mirror. <laughs> I'm not one of them. But, Too scary. But that, would, that would certainly help because then you could kind of see. One of the things that we do is put pieces of white tape. Like we could put a piece of white tape on each hip bone and you could put a t- piece of white tape on your shoulders. And that way, if you were looking in the mirror, it would show off that part of your body more where, oh, I noticed the white tape on my left shoulder is a little lower than the white tape on my right shoulder. And then mm-hmm. you could adjust from there. And that would be great. So how do you find a good equestrian Pilates instructor? Well, I think there aren't a whole ton of us out there. But there is the website that Elizabeth Hansen has. It's equestrian-pilates.com. And she has a whole bunch of information on her site. She's got certified instructors on there. The other thing you can do is, is start talking to people. Go find your local dressage chapter call them up and say, hey, do you know, you know, do, do, do any of your riders have an equestrian Pilates instructor? I think that's always the best place to start. Word of mouth is great. Instances are great. So, that, you know, that's a couple areas that to look for. Where do you become certified? Um, I became certified through Elizabeth's program out east. There are a lot of places that will certify you just in regular Pilates, and that's where we all started. We needed a, a MAT certification before we went on and got the equestrian Pilates certification. Um, as far as I know, she's the only one certifying people right now. I know that Betsy Steiner has written a great book that's out there. 
she's a lovely dressage rider, and she had started a certification course and had sort of taken it off the market. I think they were reworking it and, and trying to make it as strong as they could. She wanted people to, to feel comfortable working with both lower level riders as you know all the way up to Olympic riders. So she really wanted to structure her program that way. And as far as I know, there isn't anyone else out there doing doing that certification or, or working with that combination of Pilates and riding right now. So if someone is in an area where they just can't find a Pilates instructor, I know there are some DVDs out there. Do you recommend going that route? I think that's a great way to go. In fact, I had a gal call me last week and say, I saw your information on the web. I'm really interested. I'm not in your area. Do you have a DVD out? I think as, as an alternate, it's great. And even if you went to, you know, a regular Pilates instructor and said, here's what I'm trying to do, you know, here's what I know about my body, you know, can you help me? A lot of times they're very happy to to help you figure that piece out. It's always easier when, you know, if it's in a classroom Pilates instructor because then they have the the riding knowledge as well. But I I just, I think it's a a fabulous way to get to know your body and, and really help out your horse and take so much of that stress off of them that, that we create, you know, getting in their way um, when we're on balance. Right, because it's not natural for us to be up there, let's face it. (laughs) For some more than others. (laughs) Right, yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Well, that's all the time we have for today, Sue. Thanks so much for being our guest this week and sharing all your knowledge with us. And uh, any listeners out there, if you have any questions or comments about horsing around, please email me at audrey at petliferadio.com. Until then, happy trails. Stop what you're doing and start horsing around. Every week on Pet Life Radio, horse expert and award-winning rider Audrey Pavia will be trotting out great tips on feeding, breeding, and more on everything equestrian. So set a spell and say hey to Audrey and get ready for a darn tootin' gallopin' good time. Every week on Horsin' Around, on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.